Hiya, I'm Juliette and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these cute little beaded tassel earrings that I'm wearing one of each colour because I thought I'd show you both colourways. They're really cute, nice and summery to wear up to wear, very easy so if you're a beginner then this is a really good place to start and they don't take long to make at all either. So I'm going to flip my camera over, show you guys everything you need and then talk you through the pattern. So these are the gorgeous Julie earrings that I'm going to be showing you how to make today. Um, I'm going to talk you through the components that you need. They need these beads here, which are Lipsy beads, and we have got them in some absolutely stunning colours at Spoilt Rotten Beads. So there's an awful lot of colour choice to, cho to choose from over on our website. So you need your Lipsy beads. You will need some little three millimeter bugle beads which you can see on the sides here you'll need some three millimeter fire polish beads or three millimeter crystal bicones i've got little fire polish beads on the sides of my pieces here and that's what i'm going to be using in this orange colorway you'll also need some seed beads in the size 15 and in the larger size 11 and then you're going to need some earring findings some little teeny tiny tassels to finish off your earrings with and some pillos bead findings which i've got here if you haven't got pillos bead findings then you can actually use another size 11 bead and also um a jump ring so you know there is an alternative if you don't have pillos bead findings you also need to head over to the website and download the free pattern which you'll find on the website and i will also pop a link to that free pattern um, underneath the description of this video as well. You'll need a size 12 beading needle and you'll also need some beading thread. So I'm just going to clear off my beading station now and uh, get everything ready so I can show you how to begin making your jewelry earrings. Okay so I'm all ready to start making my earrings now. They're nice and quick these earrings, they really are. If you're a beginner then you, will, you won't find them difficult. Um, I've threaded up my needle with about sort of 60 centimetres of fireline beading thread and I have got a size 12 beading needle here. And I'm going to start off by picking up five Lipsy beads separated by five of my size 11 seed beads. Now with the Lipsy beads, you'll see they've got two holes. If I just turn this one on its edge here, there you go. Um, with all two hole beads, it's really good idea to check that all of your holes, both of your holes on each bead are clear before you start using them because it's not uncommon to get one um, bead, maybe one hole blocked, usually with the glaze because these beads have got gorgeous kind of special coatings applied to them, um, which can sometimes block a hole. If you do have a blocked hole, it's not the end of the world. You can quite often just push it, push it through with your needle um, or with a beading owl or a bead reamer. Um, but it is really good idea just to check that, check for, check for blocked holes before you start beading. Because there's nothing worse than getting part way through your pattern and then finding that you've got a blocked hole and you have to take it all apart. So those are my five Lipsy beads separated with five size 11 beads threaded onto my fire line. And I'm gonna now pull them around into a circle by sewing back through all of those beads there. Oh, don't wanna forget that little guy there, that little size 11 at the end there we go so i'm sewing back through all of my size 11s and my lipsy so all 10 beads and as i pull this round it will pull round into a circle like so and now what i can do is take my little tail of thread here and knot it to my working thread and i'm going to tie a nice double knot there and that will close up that circle and I'm going to tie a double knot by wrapping my thread around itself within that loop there. Pretty nice and tight. Okay, so that's my little circle now of beads. <clears throat> and what I can do is tighten up that circle and pull that knot inside a bead by stitching through 
my next bead in my circle there. That's going to pull that knot inside and also it will kind of have the extra effect of tightening it again. <clears throat> so you want to stitch through so that you're coming out of one of your size 11 seed beads here and you're going to pick up a bugle bead, a 15 and a bugle bead. So a bugle bead, a little 15 and a bugle bead. And skip over the top of the lipsy and go through the next size 11 bead like so. And you'll find this will happen. Your lipsy bead will tilt and your bugle bead and your size 15 will sit on top of it like so. And you can just about see that happening here with these. You can see how they're tilted ever so slightly in and you can see these bugle beads sitting on the edge. It's going to be easier to see with this orange colourway because these bugle beads really pop. You want to go round the circle, repeat that four more times so that you have got a little set of bugle beads and 15s sitting on top of all of your lipsy beads. like that there you go so i'm just going to do this three more times and then i'm going to come back to you guys and show you what it looks like show you the next stage there so i've gone all the way around now and added my bugle beads all the way around and you can see how it's kind of had the effect of making my lipsy beads kind of tilt at weird angles don't worry about that at the moment it looks a bit odd but you'll sort it out in just a minute so right now, what we're going to do is step up through the first bugle that you added and the first size 15. So you're coming out of a 15 in between two bugle beads. And this is where we're going to put our little 3mm crystals or 3mm fire polish on. And I've got these really cute multicoloured fire polish here. They've kind of got lot going on colour wise I think they're going to bring this whole pattern together so I picked up my 3mm fire polish and I'm going through the 15 that's on top of the next little set of bugles and 15s and I'm going to just straighten out these lipsy beads underneath here if I can they all want to be facing outwards with their empty holes but if they don't, it's, as I say, it's not the end of the world because when we go through those empty holes in a little bit, it will straighten itself out. I just want it to make it look easier for you two guys to see. I think I've made that worse, not easier. There we go. Okay. So you can see my crystal there sitting on top. I'm going to do that five more times. So I'm picking up my, crystal, my three mil bead, it's a crystal or a fire polish. And just go through your 15 and you want to kind of begin to pull it tight as you go around because these are going to kind of sit like a little crown on top of your lipsy beads there. I'm not going to worry about these lipsy beads that are flipping out all over the place under my design. I'll, I'll uh, sort those out in a minute when we go through the empty holes. <clears throat> but I am going to be pulling these beads tight as I go. So I've got this two more times to do and then we're just going to tighten up this circle in a moment by going through all of the beads we've just added one more time. So that's the, the little 3mm fire polish and the 15s. We'll just go through them all one more time in just a minute to tighten it all up. Okay. So this is my last 3mm bead going through now and I'm, I'm now just going to tighten everything up by going through all of those beads that sit round together there and then kind of pull them tight. You can see them sitting on top there. There's my lipsy beads kind of flipping out all over the place underneath. Already actually they're, they're beginning to straighten themselves out as you can see. So I am going to go through them. This is going to be a really fun zesty summery colorway maybe i'll have to call it zest 
this kit because it's going to be available as a kit this colorway. I think it's perfect for summer. Okay, so just going through my beads one more time just to tighten up that circle and then we'll sort those lipsy beads out underneath stop them flipping out all over the place okay so go through this 15 get my fingers out of the way show you guys what it looks like so you've kind of got this little crown of of crystals and bugle beads sitting there it's going to create this shape in just a moment <clears throat> so what we want to do now is da, da, da. Um, yeah okay sorry i was just referring to my pattern we are going to stitch down through the through a bugle bead and through a size 11 like so okay and so I'm coming out of a size 11 now and I'm going to fit pick up a 15 and my little pillows finding and another 15. So coming out with 11, I've got 15 pillows, 15, and I'm going to go back through that same 15, sorry, same 11 that I was just exiting from. And you can see my pillow speed now is going to sit like so. What I'm going to do now <clears throat> is stitch up through just the first 15 that I just added. And then go through the empty hole in the first lipsy bead. Okay. And now I'm going to pick up a 15 go through this 11 there's my 15 there's my 11 and then pick up another 15 and go through the next lipsy and this is going to straighten out those lipsy so they don't sit at weird angles can you see that there so i'm coming out of this lipsy here i'm going to pick up a 15, go through this 11, pick up another 15 and go through the empty hole in this lip seal that's underneath and you see it, it kind of flipped in on itself so I've just pulled it out so I can go through that lip seal there. And now my beads are beginning to sit straight as I want them to. I think sometimes it's easier to see this in the video than it is in a printed pattern. So if you have trouble following this step in the printed pattern, then hopefully this will help you as I go around my piece here. <clears throat> there we go. Last one. You see how that look that guide flipped in there, bring it out. There we go. And then I'm back where I started from. And I can go through this last 15 and through the pillow speed. Pull tight. Straighten it all out. Pop this down so you guys can take a look. There we go. So you can see that pretty shape emerging now. So what we want to do now is um, we're going to kind of make this little loop of seed beads that sit on the bottom of the piece in order that we can attach our tassel to the earring. So to do that, 
you guys want to stitch back through everything that you just added so back through those 15s and that also has the effect of tightening everything up as well so we're going to end up coming out of one of the 15s on the bottom of our piece there And I will get my fingers out of the way so you guys can see what I mean in just a sec. But I'm just stitching through all of the beads in that last round. Okay, now I'm back to where I wanted to be. Okay. All right. So I'm now coming out of this 15 here on the base of my piece. So this is going to be the top because it's got the pillars finding and this is going to be the base. At this stage, I'm going to just trim off the tail of thread that I left from right in the beginning because it's starting to get in my way. Um, so I'm coming out of this 15 and this is where we're going to add this little loop of seed beads. So we're going to pick up two 15s and 11 and two 15s. So I'm going to pick up two more 15s and 11 and two 15s and thread back through the 15 on the other side of that lipsy bead okay there you go there's your little loop of beads on the base you can see it really well in the blue one here okay and i want to just tighten everything up by um continuing what we did on the other side which was just to stitch back through these 11s and 15s and pull it tight as I go and you want to make sure that that little that, that little tail of um, beads sits under your lipsy like so if it doesn't want to you might just want to wriggle it back into place And that is pretty much it for the beadwork. Then we've just got to attach the findings in just a moment. And I will uh, finish off my thread and show you guys how to do that. Okay. So I'm just about back around to the other side now. And I want to finish off my thread. So there's my little beaded element that's going to be my earring and to finish off my thread I'm just going to hook my needle down between two beads here so I've got it going down between an ellipse and a 15 and so I create a little loop I can go through that loop with my needle that creates a knot which I can pull tight I can repeat that with another knot this is the same technique you would use if you need to attach more thread part way through your beadwork you can do it in the same way and pull that knot inside that next 15 and i'm now ready to uh, trim off my end of thread and attach my findings so for my findings i've got a little rose gold earring hoop here and i've got a little orange tassel here now this might be tricky to show you on the video but i shall do my very best i've got two pairs of flat edged pliers and i'm going to grip my jump ring on my tassel either side just open it out like so can you see that there it's all opened out and now you want to wiggle that little tiny jump ring into that size 11 seed bead and then close it up there we go i did it yay <laughs> that is the tassel attached and the um the earring finding is a lot easier because you're just going to grip um the loop on the earring finding bending it out to the side 
you can then slip on the pillows finding and close it up by bending it back around. And those are your really cute zesty earrings. And there they are in the aqua colorway as well. I think they're really dainty and summery. You can kind of see if I put them on the palm of my hand that they're really dainty and small. They're not kind of too in your face. You can wear them, um, you know, just every day. They're not too big and dangly. I, I really like them. I think they're very dainty. As you can see, you can have a lot of fun playing with different colourways as well. So do head over to the website, take a look at the other colours that we've got and do click on the link to download the free pattern for this tutorial as well. And don't forget to, um, to like and share our video and to subscribe to our channel too. Thank you for watching. Bye.